Step number two, after you find P hat, Q hat, and N, well, we're going to want to find the margin of error, but what that means is we also have to find this little piece of information. We've got to find your critical value. So you're going to use your confidence level to find the appropriate critical value. Use the confidence level to find the appropriate Z alpha over 2, or in other words, that's a critical value. Okay, no problem, no problem. Number three. Number three. Let's look basically at our steps of what we're doing. Uh, if you notice, all we're trying to do is find stuff that fills this out, right? Because this is really what you're going to be looking at. This piece and this piece. That's all you need to know to make a confidence interval. This little piece, do you need to know that? You can't. It's a population, right? It's a population proportion. You're never going to find that. You're estimating it with this in conjunction with this. That's it. So basically our first two steps are just filling out this thing. P, Q, P hat, Q hat, N. And then Z alpha over 2, that is your, your critical value. So step 1 and 2 fills this thing out. Step 3 says, okay, now calculate it. Find E. Remember that E equals this. After you've done this, you're going to have several pieces of information. You're going to have p hat. You have to, right? Because, I mean, you, you even use that right here. So you're naturally going to have that value. You're going to have your e. Here's what the margin of error does with your, your point estimate. The margin of error said this is the maximum difference, the most you could possibly have in a worst case scenario between this number and this number, right? So here's what we're saying. Here's our confidence number. Here's what we're saying then. We know a couple things. We know first off that, I'm sorry, was this a sample or was, was this the population proportion? Okay. We don't know exactly what this is, but we know that it's going to be less, it's going to be less than this number plus this number. Do you see why? This is the maximum, this is the maximum difference, right? The maximum possible difference. If I add this to this number, it will give me an upper range for the population proportion. Are you with me? If I add these two things together, it says, well, that's as far as I can be above it. That's it. Yes, no? Yes or no? Yes. Some viewers. No shaking. Some people look away when I, okay, all right, well, if you don't want to say it, you don't want to say it. If E is the maximum difference between this number and this number, then I know for a fact the population proportion will be less than the point estimate plus my maximum allowable distance. It has to be. This is the maximum above this number that this could be. That's it. But we can also do this thing in the other direction. If I take my p hat and subtract e, it, it's bounded now. It says that p hat was my point estimate, yes. If I add e to that and subtract e from that, since e is the most it could possibly be different <coughs> by it, it's the most that you could have. For instance, okay, let, let me say this. You ready? The point estimate is, let's, this is not a proportion, I'm just going to use some easy numbers so you can get the idea. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. The point estimate is 10. Got it? 10. P hat is 10. I say, I don't know what the population is, but what I know is the, the maximum difference I could have between the point estimate of 10 and the population uh, proportion is 2. So here's 10. Here's my, my estimate. If I say the maximum allowable difference is 2, what's the upper range for this? 
12, you know if the maximum difference between p hat and p is 2, you'd have 12. That would be the upper range, right? What would the other way be? 8. eight. So if this was p hat, I knew what my p hat was. It was 10. But I also know that the difference between this one and the actual value of p was only 2. So that means if I take my point estimate and add 2 and subtract 2, that gives me a range that I know the actual value, or I'm pretty confident, that the actual value of p will fall between. That's the idea here, is you're taking and you're adding the e and subtracting the e because it is your maximum difference between your p hat and your p. Richard, have you okay with that idea? Are there questions on it? If, you, if you're confused right now, now is the point where you should be asking a question. If you don't know what question to ask, good one might be, I don't know, where's E coming from? Or why am I adding it? Why am I subtracting it? Do you have this question? Can you answer those questions? Where's E coming from? Right there. Right there. Which are that on the board? Yes, I know. I made this up. Ha ha. I wrote this. Uh, why are we adding E? Can you answer that? It is the margin of error. Why are we adding it? E is the maximum difference. Why are we adding it to get the upper range or lower range for that? That's going to be the upper range for our population parameter. Yes? The, it's the maximum above. It could be. Why are we subtracting it? Why don't we just use P hat itself? It's not accurate. You have no idea how accurate it is. So what we do is we give a range. We say it's got to be between here and here. We're pretty confident. How do we know how confident we are? I tell you. I say, I want you to be 95% confident. How does that play into the range? What lets you associate your confidence with this range? There's something up on the board. Critical value, that's right. Because this critical value tells you right now, if you're 90% confident, you're using that. 99% confident, you're using that. It's bigger, right? Bigger range. We're going to see this in just a second. Okay, so this is how you construct your confidence interval. We find our p hat, q hat, and n. We use that in conjunction with the confidence level to find your critical value, find your e, that's the maximum difference. We add that to our p hat, we subtract that to our p hat, and that gives us a, an interval to which we are a certain amount confident, i.e. a confidence interval, that our population proportion is going to fall in. That's the whole idea here. Uh, by the way, this is written a couple other ways. This way is common for us. We're going to write it this way. Uh, it's going to be a number is less than p is less than some number, which basically says the population proportion we're certain or a certain level of confidence that it's going to fall within that range. But you can also see it this way. This is how you most likely see it on the news. On the news, they'll give you the point estimate. That's what you remember. I've said this a couple times now. When you go around the news, there's this thing called the news. And uh, it says 44% of the people like the president, or whatever it says. I don't know. Uh, it'll say the sample proportion. It wasn't the population, right? They didn't ask everybody in the United States whether they like the president. They asked just a certain group of people, uh, a sample of this. So they'll say the sample was 44%. Or 0.44, the proportion was 0.44 of the people in the United States who liked the president. And then off to the very end of this, because this is all you read, right? That's all you see. But off to the end or at the bottom, if it's a reputable company doing this, they'll have plus or minus. So basically you use, um, I'm sorry, the, uh, the population portion will be the sample Sample portion, that's our p hat, plus or minus your margin of error. So let's say we're assuming that this is going to be equal to the point estimate plus or minus some amount. This also gives an upper or lower range. Notice how this, please look at the board here real quick. This is exactly this thing. Do you see it? p hat plus e, right there. p hat minus e, right there. You follow the stream up, upstream, downstream, you get this exact same thing here. We only see on the news this piece of it. This piece is off to the bottom somewhere. So usually your confidence interval is going to match up with the critical value? Right? No, your confidence interval is given by your critical value and this piece of information. 
you use the critical value in here in that formula to find your maximum uh, difference between P hat and P. That's what you're doing. Then how would you match the confidence interval to the, um, the common confidence level? Well, this common confidence level gives you this Z score, which is a critical value, which you use in here to find your E, to add to your P hat, to create an interval that you are a certain level of confidence that your P is going to fall. Would you like to see an example? Probably. Would you all like to see an example? Yeah. yeah. Probably. Ready for that? Remember the little girl one? Well, not the little girl example. Oh. Yeah, little girls yeah. or anything. But the one where she had the, the touch therapist? Patty <laughs> cake or whatever? <laughs> Any questions? Before I erase this stuff? Are you okay with that side? And this was just kind of getting to that side. Okay, back to our touch therapist example. Touch therapist example. Um, I, I think this is the same information, but did I tell you that she tried this 280 times? 280 trials. One hundred twenty-three successes, or correct identifications. What we are going to do right now is construct a ninety-five percent confidence interval for the population proportion. Construct a 95% confidence interval for P. P stands for the population proportion. You will never know exactly how much P is. Huge population. However, we can find an estimate for the range of that and be 95% confident about this. By the way, the interpretation is a big part of this. We're going to get to that at the very end. Make sure you write that part down when we get there. So first thing, according to step number one, you've got to find me P hat, Q hat, and N. P hat, Q hat, and N. So, well, wait a second. There's no proportion up there right now. How in the world can I find P hat? How in the world can I find P hat? Firstly, you better know what P even stands for. What's P stand for? Sample. Sample, sample what? Sample population? That doesn't make sense. Those are two distinct things. This stands for the whole population? No. This stands for sample size? Really? Really? I don't know your letters. Made, you made through ABCs, now you get to PQNs. <laughs> now I know my PQNs. <laughs> Next time, won't you let this end? <laughs> that, that rhyme, kind of. Okay. You better know. You better not say, oh, sample size. That's a population sample. Population sample size. Population. You better know. You better know what that is. My goodness gracious. You better put something there. You gotta know what to do here. What's that mean? Look at it several times in your notes. Sample proportion of what? What's a success? Ah, great. So do I put 123 here? Yes. Say it again, Kayla. 123 divided by 280. Very good. Okay, so